Hey, this is Vision, Eric Mus Barnes, and you're watching Skateboarding California. And this episode is all about skateboarding graphics. So back in the 60s and 70s, when skateboards first became commercially available, there really was no artwork on the boards. I mean, the artwork is pretty lame. It, you know, you might have had a company logo on a deck or something, but that was about it. Or else you had those like plastic piece of junk kind of boards. There was no artwork on skateboards, really until the 80s. Now, I have to admit that when I first started skateboarding, like a lot of new skaters, I was 16 years old. I didn't know anything about skateboards or about skateboarding. And so my purchase was really dependent upon the artwork. Nowadays, I know a lot more about skateboarding. I know about the performance characteristics of a board. I know how long I want it to be, how wide. I know what kind of a wheelbase I want on it. But at the time when I was new, I was starting out, you know, I just got a board because it looked cool. In fact, the first skateboard I ever bought is this one right here. This is a Per Vilinder street deck uh, from Paul Peralta. You obviously can no longer see the graphic. And this board right here is the reissue of that same deck that I just showed. So it's obviously different colors. This one is blue and black instead of red and black, but it's the same graphic, it's the same uh, same idea. So, this was the first deck that I ever bought, and like I said, I really bought it purely because of the way that it looked. One of my all-time favorite boards is this one, which actually says Vision down it, and it was created for me by Melissa O'Grady, who is a skateboarder for Santa Monica Airlines. And this is her signature model deck, and she actually did the artwork on it uh, by hand, and I love this board. A uh, very special deck because, again, it's done by hand by the skater who actually designed the deck. So that was pretty awesome. One of my all-time favorite decks from the 80s was this one. This is made by Vision, and it is called the Aggressor 2. And this deck is one of the ones that always really stood out to me in terms of the visuals and in terms of the graphics and the colors and everything. I just thought that this deck really sort of epitomizes the 1980s graphic design on skateboard decks. Now having spent many years as a graphic designer and making my living through graphic design and having an appreciation for photography, I thought of combining those two things into my love of skateboard graphics and I came up with this, which is a skateboard with a photograph of a bikini model that I shot in Malibu and it turned out so well that I decided, you know what, I'm gonna make an entire line of skateboards with models on them. So that was how I ended up creating California Girls Skateboards, which features dozens of different models from all over California, and all of them are on skateboards and have skateboard graphics from photos that I had taken. Now in the 80s, the skateboard companies that actually really kind of pioneered this look were Santa Cruz and Paul Peralta. They each had dozens and dozens of skateboards that all had this kind of cartoony sort of look to them with really bold, vivid colors and really distinct shapes in all of their designs. And the thing that happened back then is that a lot of these artists who did these things, a lot of the Paul work was by Vernon Cortland Johnson, and a lot of the Santa Cruz work was by Jim Phillips. And these guys didn't get a whole heck of a lot of credit for what they were doing. So I thought it'd be kind of cool to do a video featuring a modern day skateboard artist and stuff that he has done to help a brand along and to help create more of an image for that brand and to sort of create a consistent look. Because that's what you found with these skateboard companies, since they had a singular artist doing many different boards, despite the fact that the graphics were all different, they did have a very similar style to them. And the cool thing about that was that it really established a look for Powell. It established a certain look for Santa Cruz. So I thought it would be pretty cool to do a video like this on Kenny McBride, a person who is doing skateboard graphics in 2013 for Silly Girl Skateboards. My name is Kenneth McBride, and I do graphics for Silly Girl Design. I first met Matt probably like two or so years ago. I met it through my girlfriend, Danielle, and I think we were at Etney Skate Park and they were having an art show. 
and I just went around and met all the silly girls for the first time. I had just moved out to California. I don't I do art for a living, so I just wanted to come up with some crazy ideas and just emailed it to Matt randomly and he checked him out, got back with me. He's like, dude, we, we need to do one or two of these. My name is Matt Gaudio. I'm the owner and team manager of Silly Girl Skateboards and Pink Widow Distribution. You know, Kenny and Danielle have been around for a while. Um, Danielle never was officially a Silly Girl, but she's always been you know, in the flow program. We've always hung out with her. One day I got a text message from Danielle. It was kind of funny. I, I wasn't expecting it. And I looked down and there's uh, three really cool graphics. And it was kind of a, hey, check these out. Me and my boyfriend were wondering if you'd be interested in, in working with us. I was amazed, to be honest with you. Um, Kenny, he's a he's a cartoonist. This was one of the first boards that he had showed us here, and um, I mean, just you know, the detail that involved into it was just crazy. So art for me started probably like with most artists as a kid. I drew a lot in class. Instead of doing you know paying attention in class, I was sitting there doodling either comics or just whatever. Um, I got into high school and I got into a art class where I really focused on watercolor and inking because I really liked comic books and I really wanted that old school comic book style. So as I progressed I got more into like computer art and things like that because I was a bit of a video gamer as a kid as well like a lot of people growing up seem to be. And uh, so I just kind of melded the two together eventually and uh, currently I'm working in video games doing art for video games for characters and stuff. Kenny brought a lot of character to the Silly Team by adding all sorts of different designs instead of just one plain Silly. Some of the girls started on the team 12, 13, now they're a 15, 16 year old. With, with that age, you know, their lifestyle changes a little bit. With the, the Silly Bride board, for instance, that Kenny did, it is girly. Um, the, the woman on there actually has some hips. It's not like Paris Hilton, bone twig, you know, that the girls don't want to see that kind of stuff. They want, they want something that represents them. and. And I think that's really what, what comes into play with Kenny because um, you know, his girlfriend, Danielle, she's punk rock, she's been around, she knows what's going on, and she's a heavy influence when, when Kenny's designing these graphics to say, hey, no, wait, this isn't quite feminine enough, or that's cool, but it looks too much of a, of a guy's perspective on there. So we're really lucky to have, have that sounding board on there. Other boards, I don't know. They're more horror themed, but it's cool because like the guys like them too. So it's not only a girls' board, but also guys want to ride them as well. Like the, the silly creature board, a lot of, I've heard like a lot of guys have been ordering them, mm -hmm. so it's just not girls. So yeah. Matt had to restock in them, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> I think Kenny has brought a lot of Silly Girl. He, there was just one graphic at first, and now there's like a whole bunch, and it's like not as girly. And yeah, <laughs> um, I think it's really cool what Kenny's doing because like we've had like a bunch of people, not like a bunch of people, but we've had like people offer to like to do graphics, but we're trying to break away from like the whole like girly theme. Like we've had like the makeup model, which you know Jordan loves makeup, whatever. But like we've got like jewels on the team now. And we're just getting like more hesh or hardcore and just like skating hard and I think this like shows it. And we're not just like like Bryce may be our youngest girl, but we've got girls ranging from like nine how old she's like nine now? Yeah, so from like nine to like so twenty, twenty one. Like younger like version boards and then like there's his which are like I guess older girls riding, but I'm not on one right now but I really love the graphics. I think they're really cool. Like this one, and then there's the other one, what is it, the McBride? Yeah, and then there's the Silly Pink Widow. So it's like oh yeah, that Widow, one's like really lab. sick. My That's favorite the... is the uh, Creature one. Oh yes, that's my favorite one too. But I'm on this one, the Silly Slayer, which is really sick, and I like the colors, and my grip tape matches, and it's just really beast. I've been using that word a lot lately. <laughs> it's just sick, and I've got like dagger wheels that match my board. I didn't realize how awesome my board was.
Yeah, um, I think actually Taryn's writing one of the gnarlier boards, which I'm like, what? But Taryn, like, she's pretty gnarly for a 10, 11 year old. Um, but at the same time too, you know, we're still, we're, we're still encouraging, you know, girls to skate of all ages. So we do have to kind of, you know, make sure that we still have all those offerings. And you know, being that Kenny's graphics are a little bit on the, a little bit on the gnarlier old side, we still have. Um, some of the, the younger kids coming up and really stoked on, uh, you know, Bryce Wettstein. She, um, she's actually working on a couple designs right now for Silly Girl. Um, this is one of them that she actually came up with. This is the Silly Life board. Obviously it's based a little bit on, um, you know, peace, love and happiness and you gotta remember, Bryce spends probably three quarters of the day or the week in the water at some point down in Encinitas. So obviously her board is based off of um, the surf lifestyle, which is really great. And it's really cool because like the older girls don't exactly want to be riding the makeup model or the silly life board, which is more, you know, uh, oriented and geared towards the younger girls. And this does like show what the older girls or the more hardcore girls are about. So that's pretty cool. It's awesome because it's the first pro model board, not only for me officially, but for Silly Girl Skateboards. I'm their first pro girl rider. There's not a lot of girl skaters that have um, a, pro, a pro model board with a professional career in skateboarding. And this is kind of a big deal because it is possible for girls to have a pro board. It is possible for girls to get out in the skate park and have fun. And when I started, I fell, yeah, it was dangerous. I got cuts, I broke bones, I got concussions, I busted my teeth out. I, my teeth still look nice and, you know, I, I still am skating and still walking. I still get boyfriends, I go out on dates, you know. I'm, I still wear my makeup, you know. As a girl, it's awesome to have a company like Silly Girl Skateboards out there showing, hey look, girls can become pro. Hopefully this board encourages you know, other girls out there to maybe one day get their own you know, idea onto a skateboard with their name on it and show you know, what they have inside of them and what skateboarding has brought them and their interpretation of it. I just hope that I could show that there's endless possibilities, endless routes in skateboarding, all kinds of different pathways you can go, street, pools, vert, all around, industry jobs, anything you can think of, you could do. Um, I get a lot of inspiration from old horror movies, a lot of B-movie posters. I definitely look at a lot of the older boards as well from like the 70s and 80s. A lot of them just had a really aggressive, old school tattoo kind of feel. So a lot of heavy line work, bright saturated colors, really aggressive. But each board we've done up to this point has been so different, at least thematically, that uh, you know, when we did the, the demon board, we were going for the whole Slayer look. So I did a lot of reference based around Slayer designs, their album covers, their logo designs. Um, when it came to the uh, zombie girl board, um, I took a lot of inspiration from the Misfits, the movie posters, things like that. And then most recently with Jules' board, I was really trying to nail the look that she wanted. She came to me with uh, a whole drawn out thing on a piece of paper of what she wanted. She had the girl, she had the tiger, she had all these different ideas. And I w worked with her, sat down, and we went over and I was like, all right, well, this is great ideas, we just need to get it to fit on a board now. Also wanted the whole Rastafarian looking theme of the color scheme. Initially I went with some crazy like psychedelic colors that I felt the whole board had a feel to, but she really wanted the, the Rastafarian and in the end that's, that's her vibe. So it's her board, her pro board, and we wanted to look how she wanted. So. I was sitting in the car, just listening to music, thinking, trying to come up with this design in my head. And I saw this girl with like the moon and crows flying at the moon and this like just 
girl looking up at the moon with the tiger basically coming out of her dress or like skirt or whatever and like scratching my name across the tail of the board like Jules because I'm trying to go for the no last name, Lynn's my middle name, Kinstrand Nelson is my last name. It's way too long, so I'm trying to go with just Jules, make it like Madonna, and that's why I wanted Jules on it, not Jules Kinstrand, not Jules K, not Jules Lynn, just Jules. <laughs> and then, since I shortened my name, I decided it would be cool to sh shorten Silly Girl, basically, and make it Silly G, basically G, for girl and for gangster since I'm a woman and I'm an OG, original gangster girl, I decided that would be cool over the moon and like kind of a pinup style girl, like a lock around her chest and just like the tiger because the tiger is my spirit animal and the crows and I wanted the girl to have tattoos. So I basically drew that up and I kind of put it together in a rough sketch and gave it to Kenny, and we called Kenny because he's a cartoon artist that we work with. It came out within like three trials, basically. It took like three times, and within three times, like we got the graphic, and it was sick. I was stoked, <laughs> I still am. <laughs> you know, obviously this, the graphic process isn't just like an overnight thing, and that's the first thing you always tell someone, whether they're screening shirts or boards, graphic transfer, whatever it is, you know, there's, there's a process of elimination, there's a process of um, making sure that the board, that the graphic fits on the board. Um, for instance, when we were doing the Jules board, we probably went through about 10 or 15 revisions only because, um, for instance, her head at one point was underneath the bolt graphic. The Jules part on the larger boards was cut off of the template. Um, those are things that you kind of just have to work with as you um, as you deal with the graphic artist, both who's preparing the graphic and at the factory. And that's where my job comes into play. I'm kind of a liaison between the two. I, I talk with Kenny, tell him what I'm looking for, tell him what I want, get the graphic in, and then I fine tweak it on the template and send it into the factory. Then I wait for the factory graphic designer to, <laughs> to come back. I get the proof. Then me and Kenny sit down and kind of fine tune it. And uh, once we get the AOK, -okay, um, we move forward with it. So the process we usually go through when putting a board together is, first of all, usually a theme or an idea. It can, or if I'm coming up with a board from nowhere, I guess I, I do this process on my own. But when Matt comes to me with an idea, usually I'll sketch it out. That's the most initial thing we do. We block out, based on a template, we have a template that the board's printed on. So there's different sizes and you have to fit everything within those sizes. So I'll just do a, a rough sketch, maybe some color, mostly just sketchiness to just block out where everything will be on the board, where the, the logos, where the, the headers or the, the fonts will be, just to get a feel for what, where or what will be. We usually pick color schemes all together instead of just going, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. We'll just go, hey, what kind of emotion do we want from this? So um, on the, the, the zombie board, we wanted that horror feel, so we did really, really crazy neon colors and stuff like that, whereas on the Jules board we wanted the Rastafarian theme. So we had a color scheme picked, nailed it down on what components would have those colors. Working with Kenny was pretty cool because he's already worked with Matt on a couple of other graphics that we had with Silly Girl. And um, it was cool, he's a really nice person to work with. He just kind of gets things off the bat he brought his girlfriend with him and his girlfriend was the one who really kind of vibed with me and helped like with the idea and stuff and she helps work with him. She's a girl skater so it was cool knowing that I'm kind of working with another girl skater in a sense with this is her guy and she was like kind of helping to put my direction like of the kind of the smokiness kind of mystical look to it like as far as everything she brought up like a few references to help him with at home and stuff so that was cool working with both of them for julie's board i thought i always think it's cool when like a pro um comes up with an idea and um gives it to the artist and then the artist just expands that idea and creates something awesome for like graphically for everybody to ride and the, um, the design she drew, it's pretty much described how she is as like a skater and as a regular girl. Because if you know Julie, it's like, it just describes her. You just have to mm -hmm. see it for you to know, really. 
So when working on the boards, it's a lot of fun for me because I can just sit down, you know, go at it, do my art thing, and I'm in, I guess, my room alone doing it, whatever. But then what's great is I finish it and I see the finished product and I'm like, all right, this is awesome. I hand it off to Matt and then a month or so later it gets printed and then I hold it in my hand and I'm like, whoa, this is awesome. Because it has a different feel, a different look when it's actually sitting physically in front of you. So the first few times we printed boards, I remember him handing it to me. I was just in shock. Whoa, this is awesome. <laughs> wow! <laughs> it's so much cooler when it's not just on the computer screen. Once it, you can hold it in your hands and see where it's been cut with the, um, with the sizing or whatnot on it. So most recently, Jules actually took her pro board to the X Games and I was like, whoa, the board I did, not only is it a pro model for an awesome skater, she's going to the X Games and that board's going to be in the X Games. So for me, that was just kind of like, man, you kind of forget who you are or where you're at in life, I guess, and you just kind of, it's kind of a surreal feeling. And like. The X Games is a big deal, that's pretty awesome. So I'm not only stoked for the fact that she did so well in the X Games, but the fact that she was riding a board I got to do. The number two qualifier right here is Jules Lynn. And looking really co confident and comfortable out there. Yeah, she's kind of mixing up her line too. I'm surprised, that's actually been kind of good for the uh, safety run, but It was rad for me to work with Kenny on this and put my ideas onto a, a actual deck and see them come to life. It was really rad and I'm really grateful to Silly Girl Skateboards and to Matt and to Kenny and Danielle and everyone who made this possible. Overall this has been a great opportunity. I've loved working with Matt as well as the Silly Girls trying to put together you know a look you know, that, not that their look was wrong. I loved the silly girl image, and I'm glad to have been a part of their, their family and process. But what I really liked is that everything I've added to what they've already had established seems to be, you know, accepted and everybody likes it. And that just makes me feel good that the kind of art I'm doing is not only being written by awesome skateboarders, it's, uh, you know, it's getting my art out there, and I love seeing people ride it. So it's, it's, it's a good feeling for me also you know, to have my art out there as well as see people enjoy it. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Skateboarding California, all about Kenny McBride and his really cool graphics done for Silly Girl Skateboards. Now, if you're interested in picking up any of the boards that he's worked on, just go to Silly Board Skateboards, Silly Board Skateboards? No, it's sillygirlskateboards.com. And if you're interested in any of the boards that I've worked on, you can check out CaliforniaGirlsSkateboards.com. So thanks again for watching, and I'm totally out of breath, but uh, check out some more episodes, and we'll see you next time.